Hooey. Ah. You guys ever go to the dermatologist because you got a mole removed and you're going back to look at the results, maybe get a little bit more removed, and then they tell you that the cells in that mole were severely atypical to the point where it's like one step away from skin cancer. So they're going to go in and excavate so much skin out of you that you're going to require stitches. Yeah, that's how my morning went. <laughs> but anyway, what's up guys? Den Den BMX here, and today we're going to be reviewing the Marcolo Comet that can be found on Amazon.com, but not for $65 like all the other ones. No, this big ol' honker is sold for $75, which is still under $100, which is cool. Before we get elbows deep into this video, I just want to give you guys a big thank you for watching the videos and for all the support that you guys give me. It truly does mean a lot. If you guys want to enjoy this video, I would really appreciate it if you help this video, help support the engagement on it, help me please my mistress known as the YouTube algorithm. By leaving a like on this video, it really does help out. So does leaving a comment, sharing the video around, making sure you're subscribed if you haven't already and you enjoy the content that we put out here. I also want to give a massive thank you to the current channel members, Modern Balasong, Cosmic Steez, AI Cosmic. Janet Kaminsky, and Benji. If you want to see your name up there and become one of the channel's sugar daddies, you can always go down there and join the channel membership. Tiers start as low as three bucks, and you get access to exclusive members-only videos on top of a few other perks. But if that is too much of a commitment for you, you can always go down there and hit the super thanks button as well if you still want to leave a tip. I am done being a tool. Let's talk about this stinky mama. So the last review we did was on the uh, Blue Crab Daddy uh, Addicts. That was made by Own All Olive Flippers. I think they're the same people that own the Marcolo brand as well. The guy that I've been talking to, he sent me this one. He watched the video review of this thing, and he was like, I see you think it's slippery. Well, what do you think about this one? And then he sent me some pictures of the comment and so I was like that thing looks like it doesn't pull out and he was like okay I'm gonna send you one so a huge thank you to Thomas and everyone else over at Marcolo and own all and whatever other brands they own for sending me this ballot song to review I really do appreciate it as you can see I have a light blue and pink one which is very pretty um, they did have one that was like a purple and then like a gold and I kind of wish I got that one because it kind of looked like PB and J and I think that's kind of quirky. This still looks really cool, but if I would have picked it now, I probably would have picked the PB and J colored one. I just kind of have brain damage and every time I see the color blue, I'm like, I want it. Without like realizing that I like other colors too. And its specs are very similar to the recent Amazon ballast songs we've been looking at. 6061 channel aluminum handles, a bushing system, bronze phosphorus washers. I believe it is a 420 stainless steel blade, you know. This one has jimping again, and it also has an actual grip pattern milled into these handles, which is amazing. I'm glad someone finally figured out how to do that on an aluminum balisong, <laughs> and it's deep enough to where you can actually feel it in the handles, and it actually does supply some grip for once in an aluminum balisong's life. Ain't that something? Leave a like, because miracles do exist. Now, I gotta say, out of all of them, maybe excluding the Volp, I think this is my favorite looking of the Amazon balisongs. I really like this handle pattern that they put in there. It's a little... BRS bare bones esque, but it doesn't suck. If you actually have eyes, you'll realize that it is different from the BRS handle pattern. So no, this isn't a clone, you weirdos. That's just kind of what it reminds me of. If you try to say this is a clone of a bare bones, get help, man. I don't know how you're allowed to drive. And then I also actually really like this blade design. It's sort of like a Tonto type of beat. And now they're doing the same thing that Nabali's did on the G10 Parallelogram, they're like $25 one. Now, for those of you that don't know, for the people that sell Balasongs on Amazon, 99% of the time they try and advertise it as a multi-tool, which I think is what allows them to sell it on Amazon. So usually the trainer blade has to have like some sort of gimmick. Like a lot of them just throw a bottle opener on there, which this one still does have. But on top of that, it also has a nice little ruler and they have managed to make the other side flat without totally compromising how the blade feels in your hands. They crowned both sides of this blade, but they just have it a little offset on the ruler side and it still feels really good in your hands. Like you don't notice it at all. Oh yeah, it's also got press fit Zen pins. Ain't that quirky? I didn't mention it because they all have that and I, I'm sorry. Now, as I mentioned a second ago, a lot of these Amazon ballast songs that are made by Nabali's or Own All or Marcolo, they're revolving around the like $65 range. And this Balasong is actually the most expensive one I've seen so far and it's for $75. Why? 
They don't know. <laughs> I think it may just have to be like the little bit extra fit and finish that this one gets. Like the handle design on this one is pretty significant. And then I'm sure that this blade and the blade design is probably a little bit more expensive to manufacture and give it that nice cleaner fit and finish. Uh, maybe the hardware is a little bit better quality. I'm not really sure. I haven't really touched it at all. One thing I will say about this battle song is I've flipped this thing for at least a week already and there's still no tap, which is pretty impressive. I don't think these things come loctite and this one has not felt the touch of a Torx wrench yet. But yeah, it still has no tap and just barely a little bit of play, which is more than acceptable for me for a $75 ballast song. But other than that, I'm not really sure why this is $10 more expensive than say the Vulp or the Morse or the Attix or the one that kind of looks like the Mako. I don't know, but I think for that 10 bucks more, it is still a pretty good deal that you're getting out of this thing. Sound test for this ballast song. Uh, yeah, it sounds like a really nutty aluminum ballast song. I don't know what you were expecting. All right, I think I've sat here and flapped my gums far long enough. Let me go continue to flap my gums while I flip this thing and tell you what I like and don't like about it. Ooh, man, look at that. It's starting to hurt too. That numbing stuff they put on, it's starting to wear off, so I better hurry up. Where I put the ballast, it's in my pocket. I'm so dumb. Okay, so right off the bat, one thing that I really like about the Marcolo Comet is that unlike the Addicts, there is actually a pretty significant handle design and handle pattern that provides grip on this thing. Um, they actually milled in more than a pube this time. They actually milled deep enough into these handles to where it actually provides some grip that your hands can dig into, which I think is a huge improvement in the grip department, which is where aluminum handle ballast songs struggle the most, I think. So that is definitely a big plus. That being said, while it is pretty grippy where there's actually a grip pattern, um, where there isn't, it's like twice as slippery than on a normal, just like plain handled aluminum balisong. And I don't know why. I think it's just like the finish that they gave this balisong. It is, it's still sort of like a satin finish, but it's almost like a satin gloss. And I feel like that makes the bare parts of the aluminum handles quite a bit more slippery than they already are. While this thing does have more grip, I am still struggling with this thing flying out of my hands a little bit, which again is not the funnest thing in the world and it is quite annoying at this point. Like for most tricks, it is pretty good and it provides sufficient enough grip, but there's just some like say ladders, even with the jimping, this thing kind of does want to slide out of my hands. Oh, see that's that's I think that's where I feel it the most when I try and start doing a choker fan It just kind of want to slips out of my hand uh, A lot more often than like any other ballast song aluminum or non-aluminum See it, I just like always do that it kind of pisses me off because choker fans are like one of my most favorite tricks And I can't really do them that consistently at all with this ballast song there I finally got a good one but but a lot of times I try and start the choker fan and it either just slips right out of my hand like that, or I like spin it and it doesn't grip my, and my finger just kind of spins on the handle and then I just like stops and I drop it and I feel like an idiot. Or something like that happens and it makes me mad. You see right there, I just tried to do a rollover and it just like flicked it out of my hands because my fingers didn't grip into it at all. So while the handle pattern in this thing does improve the grip quite a bit, the finish that they gave these handles still makes it quite a bit slippery. Yeah, unfortunately this one still does suffer the uh, infamous aluminum handles are slippery problem that no one seems to be able to figure out. I think choker fans are the one place where it really bothers me. Um, maybe ladders is like a close second, um, but other than that, it seems to be pretty manageable with this handle pattern. Another thing that this ballast song is doing that's a little weird is it doesn't want a parabolic, like just this normal parabolic that I do. It kind of just like twitches in the air in this really weird way and it makes the parabolic a little unpredictable. I can still usually catch it, but like sometimes I throw it up in the air and it just kind of gets stuck like that. Uh, I don't really know what's going on there. I don't know what's wrong with the balance on this thing, but uh, it doesn't really want to do that specific parabolic. The other ones, it can do just fine, um, but it's just that first, that like main one, it's a little screwy and does that a lot of the time. But for most other tricks, I'd say it works quite well. Actually, I lied. We saw earlier, this thing does not want a chaplain. Like I cannot, oh my God. Like I cannot chaplain regularly with this thing. I have to do it extremely slow because if I try to do it any faster, 
it just flies out of my hand. And I think that's a combination of the handles being slippery and just like the balance and the weight distribution of this thing. Um, something's a little funky about it to where it doesn't like chaplains. I have to do really big, slow circles in order for this thing to stay in my fingers. And it's quite, it's quite lame. Can scissor pretty good though. Aerials are pretty easy to time. Parabolics are usually pretty consistent, except for that one that gets a little screwy sometimes. But I just did like four pretty perfect right there. Yeah, aerials are pretty good. Don't really have an issue with those. Um, rollovers and such, when your hand actually grips, it's they're pretty nice. When you do get them around, it carries the weight very well. And I don't really have any complaints other than just lack of grip. Uh, shocker, what a shocker that is. But yeah, other than that, this thing does flip pretty good. And again, I know not everybody is gonna think this is the most slippery thing in the world. People are different, and I'm sure the texture of some people's hands are gonna be able to grip slippery aluminum better than mine. But I also know that there's gonna be people that also have this problem. And that's why it's such a big part in my like grading process of aluminum handled ballast songs, because I know that if I struggle with it, it's guaranteed that other people struggle with the slipperiness as well. I don't know, man, even with this jimping, and this jimping is deeper than what it was on the attics. It's just like the finish and the texture. It could be this anodization that's what's making it a little slipperier than normal, but I don't know, I, I'm not enjoying it. Where there is grip though, it is pretty good. It's like better in some places and worse in some places. It's very bizarre. But slipperiness aside, this is a pretty well-balanced, nice flipping balisong especially for the price. Comparing this to the other Amazon aluminum handled balisongs, I think the Volk is the better deal, both because it's cheaper than this balisong and the grip is just better on it. The Volp is one of the few aluminum handled balisongs, not just on Amazon, but anywhere that I've flipped that has good grip. So it's just kind of hard to beat that balisong with the price and the flippability that it has. But uh, I would say this is a close second. I'd say it maybe ties with the Morse. But this is another solid option in the Amazon aluminum balisong trainer battle that's going on. And uh, so far, I genuinely think this is one of my favorite looking ones. I think if they just switched the texture of the handles a little bit. But other than that, it is pretty well balanced. It's a pretty neutral flipper. I don't really notice it being crazy handle bias or crazy blade bias. I think it flips really well when it stays in your hands. It's just, again, like most other aluminum handled balisongs, its biggest struggle is with the grip. So yeah, I think that's gonna wrap up the flipping demo for Senor Comet. And I think with that, we are gonna conclude our review and demo of the Marcolo Comet. I think it is another great addition to the ever-growing sea of well-flipping, good value, good quality Amazon balisongs that are under $100. I think it's fantastic that this pocket of the market is growing because it's affordable, it's very easily accessible, and since they're trainers, they should be available and legal everywhere in the world. And I really think growing this part of the market is really only going to do good things for the Balasong community. And I think this is another great addition to that part of the marketplace. And if you like the way this thing looks and you really aren't deterred by the slipperiness of an aluminum handle Balasong, I would recommend this thing. Once again, a big thank you to Marcolo and all the guys over there for sending me this Balasong. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Once again, if you did enjoy, I would really appreciate it if you let me know and help support the engagement on this video by leaving a like. Leave a comment. Give me your thoughts and opinions. Maybe share the video around. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next time.